Welcome into the Broncos break. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Broncos Breakdown Mailbag Edition. Hopefully I can get through the whole show with at least remembering my own name, which is Matthew Peterson. And I'm answering all the questions you guys had during our live show, which airs, by the way, every Tuesday at 3 o'clock Mountain Time. Our first question we're going to answer, though, comes in uh, from Moses via Super Chat. With Tim Patrick out, how do we feel about Greg Dulcich now? I think Greg Dulcich is definitely in line for a bigger workload. I think Dulcich is a great player. I did pump the brakes a few weeks ago when we talked about Dulcich having a breakout season, saying, hey, I don't think this offense is going to pass the ball enough for every single player to get all the targets they want. I think Dulcich might be the odd man out, but he probably just picked up some extra targets now that Tim Patrick is out. So this definitely helps his stock, if you will. That sounds bad, but... I think Greg Dulcich is probably in line for a bigger season now than he was before. Bonkius Maximus. Broncos fans have PTSD at this point. This is just like a group therapy session at this point where, yeah, this team has just been plagued by injuries. And it sucks. I don't know what the solution is. I don't know if it's strength and conditioning. I mean, we've had a lot of coaches get changed. That's a lot of uh, routines get switched up and everything. But one thing remains constant. And that's injuries. And I wish I had the golden ticket. I don't. I, I wish I did though. Because if I did, I would be the first man to get on a plane and go to Denver and tell them what to fix and get this over with. Ronald Putnam next one up. Hi, Matthew. What's going on, Ronald? How about taking a chance on Nikhil Harry and keep Tim Patrick with the team in some capacity for his leadership skills? What do you think? When it comes to Nikhil Harry, I'm not too high on him. Former first-round pick out of Arizona State. He was bad with the Patriots. He was bad with the Bears last year. If you want to take a flyer on him, that's fine. There's no risk whatsoever. You give him a one-year vet minimum contract with no guaranteed money, and you can cut him, and it's more or less a two- to three-week tryout and see if he can live up to those old first-round potential. But I don't think Nikhil Harry's walking through this door and saving this team's wide receiver room. So... We can give it a shot. I would not have very high expectations. As for keeping Tim Patrick with the team, would love to see it. I don't know what his playing career has in store beyond this year after the Achilles injury, but if he wants to be a part of the coaching staff down the line, yeah, sign me up. Jerry Judy's burner. Biggest surprise at training camp so far? Good question, Mr. Jerry Judy's burner. Biggest surprise? Um, I'm going to go like a surprise player. I think that's probably what you're asking about. One name that I keep hearing about, and maybe you've heard it already, is the running back out of uh, Youngstown State, the UDFA, Jaleel McCaughlin. So he holds the NCAA FC, well, NCAA rushing uh, title, if you will, over 8,000 yards. So most rushing yards in NCAA history, but he did do it at an FCS school, so it doesn't quite hit the same. But he has been someone who's been a walking highlight so far in training camp. And it's at a good position because if Javante Williams ends up needing an extra week or two to get ready, and he's not quite ready week one against the Raiders. Having someone to balance the workload with Samaj P. Ryan, who's never really had the lion's share of the workload in a, in a game or a season, McLaughlin would be a great step in. So this is definitely a name to keep in mind in the back of your head as to someone who might turn it on during the preseason and the regular season. Everyone goes, who is that guy? Oh, yeah. A uh, little Darren Sproles fella. Well, he is definitely making this roster. I think he will. Now, off the wall question, because we were just talking about UDFAs making the roster. And I watched Kurt Warner's, uh, Kurt Warner's UDFA story, that movie, uh, American Underdog, on the plane once. And it was solid. It wasn't that great, if I'm being honest. But I do want to know, what's your favorite sports movie all time? For me, it's a no-doubter. It's probably my favorite movie of all time, too. Miracle. It's the best story out there. Favorite movie. Can't go wrong. But let me know. This is the pinned comment, so scroll on down and let me know what your favorite sports movie all time is. Garrett Ringy, what's going on, dude? How likely is it to land Shelby Harris since he visited training camp? He did visit the Broncos last weekend in training camp, and maybe by the time you're watching this, he's already signed with Denver or with somewhere else. But Shelby Harris did also take a visit with the Cleveland Browns not too long after. How likely is it? They just signed Fabian Moreau, so I think if they were going to make a signing, they would have already done it at this point. 
if the workout went very well, they did not want him to leave and then go to Cleveland and work out there and maybe have the Browns swoop in. So my guess is it didn't go so well that they decided we can't let him leave. We have to sign him right now. How likely then? I'd give it less than 50%. Javante, what's going on? How do you truly think we need another wide receiver? We have Callaway and Mims. Let's throw on Denver's uh, wide receiver depth chart for a moment because I agree that when you're talking about replacing Tim Patrick, step one is internal, right? And that's what you find out over the next couple of weeks in training camp and in preseason is can Marvin Mims and Marquez Callaway, can one of these guys, because they seem like the first two options, handle the workload of a wide receiver three? And if they discover Marvin Mims is a rookie and he has looked like a rookie so far and we do not want to trot him out there for wide receiver three duties, and if Marquez Callaway isn't impressing for whatever reason, then I think later on in camp you could see them add a wide receiver. But for now, I am sure they're going to spend the next few weeks seeing what they have in-house before they decide to go external. So, Javante, we're on the same page that step one is see what you have in your own backyard. See, how, see what you have in your farm system, right? With Marvin Mims, who you loved so much, you moved up in the draft to get, and the timing really couldn't be better, unfortunately. That sucks to say, but if there was going to be an injury, Marvin Mims being drafted this year would line up nicely to take on a bigger workload. We just have to wait and see if he's ready for a bigger workload because all we've had so far is a couple of training camp practices. Like you can't really get to know someone super well until I think some preseason games are played. Nick Jaimez, what's going on? What happens if we lose Williams, Javante Williams? Should we sign another running back? Yeah. Let's not go down that road, though. Right? Why? Let's not cross that bridge if we're not even on that island at the moment. Let's stay far away from that island, right? If Denver were to lose number 33, yeah, they have to have, you know, a serious... Uh, looking into the free agency market for running backs but we're not at that point so i don't want to go down that road right now nick but if we do yeah they would sign another running back for sure now when it comes to mailbags here we are the best in the biz because we're all about getting our audience and our you know subscribers and viewers on screen and having that two-way conversation which isn't very common uh, for a lot of YouTube channels. So make sure to subscribe if you want to get on screen, if you want your voice heard, and if you want to have a back and forth with myself and not have it be the Matthew Sports Show, but Chat Sports, which is all about chatting, well, hit that sub button down below. Jackson Nicholson, do you think Zach Allen could break out big this year as he has already looked impressive this training camp? We can throw on Zach Allen's stats over the last four seasons, do I think he's going to have a breakout season? He has looked good so far in training camp. Every year, I mean every year, we do become guilty of getting suckered into training camp storylines. We were all guilty of it last year, and we know how that worked out. So I'm not going to overreact. I make this promise to myself every single August, and I usually break it by the time week one rolls around. But this year, I really want to stick to it and go, I'm not going to overreact to a couple of training camp practices, which Zach Allen has dominated, but five and a half sacks last year in 13 games. Denver is hoping to get that five and a half sack player for 17 games, and that number could balloon up to nine to 11 sacks, and that would be a very nice addition for this pass rushing unit. How do I think he'll do, though? I don't think he's going to do as well as maybe we're all hoping he will, if I'm being brutally honest. Tyrone Williams, what do you think our record would be this season? I've said for a while now that Denver, in my prediction, goes 9-8. and eight. I don't think Sean Payton goes below 500. 9 and 9-8 got Miami in the postseason last year, so there might be a playoff team. I don't think it will be this year, though. I know that's the goal. It's always the goal, but I think 9-8 and eight is very much in reach for Denver in 2023. Last question coming in from Kiko Del Rio. Is it Jack Del Rio? Is the line truly improved? I've heard the news from camp, and it sounds like it's not really improved. Uh, Jonathan Cooper had a sack today. Well, they missed Mike McGlinchey for the first bit at training camp. Uh, he had some personal issues going on, but hopefully all that has been resolved or taken care of, if you will. And I have heard that the defensive line has been winning, which 
isn't super duper comforting because the defense can't even really go truly 100%. They can't tackle the quarterback or anything. Is the line improved? I think so. It's hard for it not to be improved. Like, we're talking about, you know, I mean, we make fun of Graham Glasgow sticking in last year, but he was kind of better than Lloyd Cushenberry was at center. But regardless, like, hopefully no more Billy Turner, Cam Fleming, and a revolving door at the two tackle positions. And we have some stability with Garrett Bowles and Mike McGlinchey. I think it is improved. We'll have to wait and see because I do agree that far too often NFL fans get suckered into training camp storylines and they buy into it way too much and the regular season comes here and we're like oh yeah we kind of knew this was going to happen anyway but we all just kind of hid behind training camp storylines and hoped it wouldn't i think it will be better i don't think it'll be a top 10 offensive line though some summer hot takes now it is 84 degrees at least that's what the weatherman said it would be when i filmed this on tuesday and that gets us a nice warm plate take no NFL take today. I am going to go college football just because I can't wait for college football to return. And my warm play take is that CU covers the roughly 20-point spread against TCU in week one of college football down in Fort Worth. Not good year last year for Colorado. We don't need to bring that up. But TCU, which went all the way to the national championship game, lost a lot of players from that team. And that was a Cinderella run, sort of, pretty much. Not sort of, definitely. So I think TCU regresses, and 20 points is a lot of points for Deion Sanders to lose by. I don't think that happens. Give me the buffs plus 20.